Hey guys, it's me, Morgan Court. I'm going to talk about some news stories that I've come across over the last uh, couple of hours. Basically around games and stuff like that. And then there's a few political things that I want to talk about near the end of it. And uh, that will be today's vlog. So let's just begin with Assassin's Creed. Ubisoft just announced that the PS4 and the Xbox One editions of the game will be locked at 90, or not, sorry, not 90, 900 resolution at 30 frames a second. That's a curious thing right there, that they have decided that it's going to be the same across both systems. Um, quoting that they don't want there to be any kind of dispute about how the game runs across the systems, and basically everyone will end up with the exact same experience except for PC players, which is clearly superior because our machines are beasts. But that seems strange to me, because the PS4, hardware-wise, is clearly superior to the Xbox One. Not by a lot, but it is technically better than the Xbox One. I don't think it's fair to punish PS4 players because they bought the better hardware system than Xbox One players. Because they can run Assassin's Creed 4 at probably 60 FPS at 1080. The Xbox One can't do that. So to restrict it on the PS4 simply because of the Xbox One is unfair to Sony users. Well, the Xbox One players wouldn't really, it, it doesn't matter for you guys because it's basically going to be what it would have been anyway. It's just, it really matters for the Sony fan base because Sony's going to get like shafted here pretty, pretty harshly with the dramatically decreased frame rate than what they're used to. So I'm not sure I agree with Ubisoft on this decision. I think they should make the game the best it can be for every system and to hell with the consequences because I don't even know what that, what that noise is. Because people go to systems for these experiences. I mean, if you want the best console gaming experience, graphics wise and frame rate wise, you should go with the PS4 if the PC is not an option. Like, it's just. Like, if they don't optimize the game well for the systems, then what's the point of getting it for that system, you know? I don't agree with this decision. The game should be the best it can perform on every system. It's like assigned to. You shouldn't make them all the same so everybody has the same. They're different because they're different systems. That's how it works. The PC version of a game will be different than the console version of a game. If done well, you know, if done right, if it's ported correctly, if it's optimized well, you know, all of these things. You can't have it be a blanket, everybody gets the same, fuck you. That's what you get for spending $800 on a PC or $400 on a console. Y'all get the same, fuck it. That's not how it works, and that's not how it should work, and I hope this does not become the standard in console gaming. On along with along with console gaming, Shadows of Mordor is going to be released on the Xbox 360 and the PS3 in about a month. And what's interesting about those versions of the game is that they're being released and like made by a completely different studio. I don't know the studio off the top of my head, but it's not Monolith. And they've stated that with these versions of the games, they have all but had to remove the entire Nemesis system because the old gen consoles could not handle the background calculations that the Nemesis system requires in order to function correctly. This is a damn shame because the Nemesis system is one of the coolest parts of the game and that's one thing that keeps me going back every time because I'll encounter a fucker I killed like hours ago and he's still there and he's mad at me and I'm gonna go kill him again. That's so cool. No other game really has that. So you're restricting one of the best parts of the game content-wise to older gen releases, which I suppose is to encourage people to move forward and get the next gen, but not a lot of people can afford the next gen. I mean, it's an investment. It's like a half a grand investment at the minimum. If you want a console with controllers and games and all that crap, that's gonna cost you a pretty penny. And you sh if like, it's sad that um, it can't, be as great as it is on current gen in the old gen, but I kind of get it. Does it's a system restriction? They just simply cannot handle the processing power required in order to get these games to run well. So I don't know. It's just it's one of those stories that has everybody going like, huh? All right. Well, that explains why it's being released a month later. It's because the whole game's going to be different. So I wonder how it's going to turn out. Probably not well. Probably not well because the Nemesis is. Yeah. The Nemesis system is really cool, so that's there. Evil Within comes out later this month, I believe in about a week or so, the Evil Within will come out, and that's 
primed to be one of the best survival horror games since Resident Evil 4, which um, would be incredible because Resident Evil 4 is a goddamn good game. So that'd be really cool. I will definitely be uh, be able to take a look at it. Most likely for Halloween is what I'm shooting for. So it seems like the ideal game for that. My goal is I'm probably going to do like a week leading up to it. And then I will finish with like a big movie night or something like that. It's just evil within. If I can play it that long, it's supposed to be quite scary. So we shall see. And uh, moving on in the world of television, Flash starts this week. It actually starts on um, the 7th, which would be today, and uh, which is very exciting. And then we have Arrow Season 3 starting sometime. I don't know when. I'll have to check. It starts, uh, I believe, this week. I just don't know what day. It's either Tuesday or Friday. It might, be two, it might be Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday. Shoot for Wednesday. Arrow starts on Wednesday. And um, a TV show is coming back after many, many years off the air. I don't know when it ended. But apparently Twin Peaks and David Lynch are coming back to Showtime for a, is it nine episode stint? It's like a miniseries designed to, it's not a reboot. It's a real-time continuation of where Twin Peaks left off when it ended in the 90s. And um, that's a really interesting idea, and their goal is to answer a lot of unanswered questions for dedicated fans and to bring it to a satisfying conclusion. So, you know, if you watched Twin Peaks and you were left with a lot of, you know, what the fuck happens to so-and-so, then hopefully these upcoming episodes will be able to answer your questions and you can find out what happened to so-and-so. I never watched Twin Peaks. I will probably now because... Um, I'm curious to see how this works out because I've never really heard of a TV show coming back after so long a time with a real-time continuation. So it's an interesting thing that's going on here and I really want to see how it turns out. So I'm probably going to watch all Powerhouse My Way Through Twin Peaks and then when the new episodes come out in 2016, I'll watch it then. And moving to the world of politics, Kim Jong-un hasn't been seen in a month. Hmm. Where could he be? Apparently he missed some big-ass parade that he was supposed to be at. And uh, there's been talk of the second most powerful man in Korea, North Korea, um, going down to South Korea to begin talks. Just just talking. And if, you know, if something happened to Kim Jong-un and he's no longer in power, there's questions of if he's been deposed, if he's been usurped, if he's dead. We don't know. We just don't know. But it could potentially lead to future North and South Korea talks and maybe, this is a big maybe, we could see a potential unification many years down the road. If in fact Kim Jong-un is no longer in the picture. If he is dead, which my money is on because of stories that I've read in the past month or so, claiming that he's fallen ill to an overconsumption of Swiss cheese. True story. First off, how great would that be? Like, side note. If Kim Jong-un died because he ate too much Swiss cheese, that'd be the greatest thing ever. Anyway, back. So, that'd be really good if, you know, North and South Korea could, you know, make up. Because North Korea is super fucked and they need as much help as they can get. And they're not getting it with this fat ass in charge of the country. So, they need help. I mean, if Kim Jong-un is gone, and we know he's gone, and North Korea is open to outside assistance, the UN and the US should fucking get in there and fix it. Sorry, not the U.S. The U.N. and all the world's countries should get in there and help fix it. The U.S. needs to solve their own problems, but that's a video for another day. So North Korea is definitely on my, like, it's in my watch gaze. I'm keeping an eye on that because I'm really curious to see what's going on there. If he comes back after, like, a few months and be like, It's my comeback tour! <laughs> I'm gonna kill you all! Woo! I hate you, Kim Jong-un. Just let that be said. So, who eats Swiss cheese? Like, I, I can enjoy Swiss cheese in like bare, you know, thin, almost not present, but like, in order to eat enough Swiss cheese to become sick, I wouldn't be able to do that. Pepper Jack? Hell yeah. Swiss cheese? No, nah, probably not. Maybe Colby Jack? Not cheddar. It's, people are particular with their cheeses. I, I don't think it's trans. I would definitely say that my favorite cheese is Pepper Jack, so. That should be about it. Um, Smash is uh, doing very well. They just released their first tier list off of a tournament that happened in Japan over the last weekend. 
And it's interesting to see who's at the top and who's at the bottom. We got some newcomers like Rosalina is at the top. Meanwhile, you've got characters like um, Ganondorf and Palutena sitting at the bottom of the list with the number one player on the tier list being Sheik, which is pretty interesting uh, to take a look at the tier list. It'll be interesting to see how the game evolves over the next couple of months. And I'm sure there will be several patches and stuff to nerf some things and to change some things around. And with the Nintendo's current DLC mindset, I don't think it's any stretch of the imagination to imagine later on down the road that we could potentially see some new fighters in DLC packs, of which I will buy all of them. Because Smash is amazing. So, fuck Diddy Kong. Alright, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this kind of like news delivery show that I'm going to try to be doing more often. I have a lot of def uh, fantastic sources now that I've been able to scrounge up through the internet and I check them daily so if you guys like this kind of news delivery thing that I've done here then let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to do more of them I probably will anyway because fuck it it's my show and I will talk to you all later have a good one guys